Like so many books written during the Harlem Renaissance, the 20s and 30s, they share a common, a commonality. They center around colorism, mm -hmm. racial identity, mm -hmm. sexual identity, class, equality. Let's talk about another theme though, and that is the theme of love. Not only how it has impacted our characters from the 20s and 30s, but also how it has impacted each of us. In this particular story, was Helga unlucky in love or was she too picky? And that theme of love, being unhappy, unlucky, being too picky, missing love from family, love from a mother, a father, pick it up any way you would like to. Think about that theme of love. What do you think? I think she was definitely searching for love. Remember, this was a woman whose father had left her mother. Her mother, who was Danish, married a white man. They didn't accept they her. They rejected her. So she was always looking for someone to lift her up mm -hmm. and make her feel better. And in a lot of ways, she was never able to find that. And I don't think it was that she was too picky. She just hated herself so much mm -hmm. that she could never ever accept that somebody could really love, love her. her. And we see a lot of that in women today. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I was just thinking the same thing, that, that, that often when we think about the concept of love or the theme about love, you know, it's, it, it's in the context of relationships mm -hmm. with other people, with, with men or with women, friends, family. Um, family. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the, 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 the concept of the relationship you have with yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how much you love. Your first love. Your first, first love, first yes. Yourself, yes. right? And so, and that just manifests in everything that we do. So whether or not she was picky or unluck unlucky mm -hmm. has to do with the fact that she didn't love herself. Right. So, um, please. To your yeah, point, yeah. I am so loved because it, always starts with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't love anyone unless I loved me. Mm -hmm. And because of the way I feel with that, anything and everything that I do is done with the base of love. And by that, I mean it, whatever goes around comes around. And it, to me, it was very important. And my mother and my father taught me that. My mother and my father used to tell me when I was a child that the bottom of my shoes never got dirty. Mm -hmm. And they never got dirty because everybody picked me up. <laughs> I like that. From, I, I just I never got that. a chance to wear I out my that. shoes. I love that. And every, you see my aunt, I'm on her hip. I went from one aunt to the other on their hip. And so with that in me, in my DNA, I could never ever respond to anyone that I cared about without feeling love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was my first feeling. And I think for a woman, they say the first love you have is your father. Yes, yes. And I know that was very, very true for me. I'm definitely the quintessential mm. daddy's girl. Oh, yeah. And when she had no father mm. in her life, only an uncle mm -hmm. in Denmark, right? Mm -hmm. She had no father in her life. She was always hungry, sure, always, sure. what's the word the kids use now? She was thirsty mm. all the time. Well, I and wonder about her relationship with her, her, with her dad. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Even with her uncle, it was conditional because <laughs> oh, once, yeah. right, she didn't marry the way they thought she could and bring fortune to their family, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. They had a problem with her. Mm. And that's no where the element, welcome. that right. was the like element God of racism. Left a child who has his own. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know? And that was the, uh, the element of racism within the family. Well, it's I, I would certainly like to know what her relationship with her biological dad was, because once the mother and he divorced, she was the only person of color in her family. Mom remarried. Mm -hmm. She and her white husband had a white child. Yes. Uh, even though... Uh, Helga tried to associate with her relatives in Chicago. Uh, if you remember, that uncle's wife was so racist. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Although he did take care of her at the very end mm -hmm. by giving her money. But he gave her so she didn't have that foundation, that Denmark. foundation of right. love. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 She didn't have that foundation yeah. of love, which is so critical mm -hmm. to one's sense of self-esteem, mm -hmm. one's upbringing, one's identity. Well, and, and not just women. I, I've told this story before. I was on the uh, Foster Review Board. And um, one of the things I remember very distinctly coming home and you'd read these case stories and the children were not loved. Mm -hmm. They were thrown away mm -hmm. very often. 
and you'd sit and listen to these cases. And I remember coming home and telling my husband, there's going to be a time when these same children have aged out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we going to pay that price. That's right. Have a That's price. right. We will pay yeah. a price. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Because you're yeah. talking about young men and women who do not know what love is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we were to apply that to today, mm -hmm. to the notion of children who have been thrown away, thrown away, who have no sense of belonging, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a result, look to other entities such as gangs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very what much have been the implications? What are some of the modern day results of that. What do we have today? We have people who will shoot in a crowd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who will shoot in a house with children in it, who will um, run somebody down mm -hmm. and keep driving. And keep driving. Yeah. Who think that what's yours is theirs and that they have the right to take it from you mm -hmm. with no conscience, whether you're young, old, male, female, it doesn't matter. And that's the world that we find ourselves in. Um, and it breaks your heart. Mm -hmm. And it's frightened you. It, but there's yeah. hope. <laughs> that, that, there, yeah. there, there, there is there's hope. hope there's, there's always hope. Because there's there's a hope. lot of people who are looking for love come, they join sororities. Yes. They join a church. They're looking for sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. They're looking for family. Mm -hmm. Some map toward and trend toward and cycle toward gangs. But I remember when we had a Founders Day. Mm -hmm. And our national president was at our Founders Day of our sorority. And she said, you are all in this together. We are all in this together. And she was encouraging us to embrace our collegiate sorrows, mm -hmm. to bring them in, because mm. some of them are hurting. Yes. And they found their way to us, and I'm sure every other sorority Everyone. feels the same way, because they want acceptance. Mm. They want us to believe in them, embrace them, and love them. And you see it. I see it in, in my church. People who have really hit rock bottom walk down to that altar mm -hmm. and say, I want I to be my, a part of you. I give, I give myself, myself to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because um, through my sorority, I actually work at the juvenile, I work mm. with young men at the juvenile mm. detention center. Um, and you do good work. And, mm -hmm. you know, to work with these young men who have been thrown away, thrown who away. do not have father figures, mm -hmm. you know, the repercussions for that lack in their life mm -hmm. is them ending up where they are. Mm -hmm. But the hope yeah, right. is that when we go in and we work with these young men, mm -hmm. we don't know what they're in there for. Mm -hmm. We don't, don't know how. Ask. Don't it's it? Not it's, not, it's not important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The way we important. set up the program, we cannot ask. Mm -hmm. That's important. Mm -hmm. um, so we walk in there and we say to them, we don't know what you've done. We don't know how long you're going to be here. And we don't care. Mm -hmm. And we work with them on a, uh, on a monthly basis and we bring outside speakers in to talk to these young men. And you can see in their faces, in their eyes, the way they respectfully mm -hmm. interact with mm -hmm. us that they realize mm -hmm. that they have made mistakes. Mm -hmm. But they also realize that they are not defined by, by those that mistakes. That yes. mistakes. And that's the hope. That's exactly. the hope. That's the that's hope that you're hope. giving them, that's that the of hope. unconditional you love. See it. You can absolutely you know, And the questions it. that they that they ask when we bring in, you know, when we have our sessions. Um, last week we brought in a, a young man who, well, not, he's not that young, actually, we're the same age, so he's... <laughs> he's young. He's, he's young. 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 Vibrant. <laughs> young man. <laughs> and, um, you know, and he... Um, spent seven years in prison, mm. and now is the owner of a multi-million dollar real estate development business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the questions that they were asking this man, well, how did you do this? How did you, how did you get credit? How did you stay away from the streets? Mm -hmm. How did mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, 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 you, when you got a girl at home and, or, or your boy is still in the street and you were trying to do good, I mean, you could see that they looking for an are looking for a sense of family. Yes. And they found that sense of family in the street 
but now they want to find that family somewhere else, legitimately. Mm -hmm. And they do and that's find the it, hope. And they find it there. And Debbie, you'll remember this when we worked um, with the young people in our respective roles, me as the county administrator. Mm -hmm. And I went over to that same facility and I was appalled to mm -hmm. see those kids watching Maury Povich and all of these other really, really low budget, low down shows. And I said, this guy, stop. Mm -hmm. So I said, the only thing they could watch on TV with Channel 13, PBS, right? MSNBC, the Theater. Uh, Discovery, <laughs> all of the history shows that channel. the History Channel, and oh my God, when I'd go over there, Change. they would call my name, Miss Harley, I'd turn around, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> they would boo me up one side, <laughs> down the other. And so I decided that, you know, like, y'all are in a cell, I'm not, but I know, I'm an adult, I know what you should be watching. Well, fast forward a year later, when Barack Obama was running mm. for president, and when I went in there, they were going, Miss Harley, Miss Harley. So I wasn't going to turn around because I wasn't about to be booed. <laughs> they said, no, we're not going to boo you. <laughs> <laughs> they said, Obama, Obama, That's right. Obama. Yes. I said, That's oh right. my now God, they know. thank you, Lord. Yeah. It yeah. worked. And when it we went in work. and did the program well, with them, tell when them we about went that. In, the other thing is we did a career day. And we, yes. uh, we did it for several years in a row. This is prior to us already going in. And I took some of the young people who had been working with me, whose names shall not to be disclosed at this time. But these were brave young people because... You know, there were kids coming in shackled, mm -hmm. sure. and you had to be brave, and they're locking the doors behind mm -hmm. us, mind you. But these young people who were in college came in, and they said, I am you. Yes, and right. I'll yeah. never forget, there was young, one young man sitting in the front row, and the tears were streaming down mm -hmm. his face, just streaming down his face, because he recognized, but, but for... Mm -hmm. An unfortunate occurrence, he would have been mm -hmm. yes. sitting yeah. at yeah. 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 a man yeah. with him. And, and you, you, you can't help but say, I need to mentor. Mm -hmm. I need to be available yeah. to uh -huh. these young uh -huh. people. I cannot turn them away. And they're at every age. Yeah. At yeah. every age. These are the children who are in the detention center, but I can tell you, I mean, I currently teach in a graduate program, and it never fails. After each semester, a group of students will come up to me and say, I want to stay in touch. Can I be your intern? Right, exactly. Can I go to lunch with you, a dinner with you? I want to, I just, because they're not they're getting looking for that home yeah. at home. And it's incumbent yeah. upon us as black foxes. Yes. yes. To, yeah. to make Absolutely. sure that we are turnkey. That's right. Absolutely. It's easy for us to sit among ourselves, but we have to turnkey Absolutely. Yes. our experiences and reach down. And set the because example. But, for the grace of God, go I. Absolutely. Okay, and so we must turn a key down. On with any given day. On any given day. day. That is our charge. Exactly. Exactly. That is our charge. That is our charge. Our mission. Our mission. mission. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. That's our mission.